Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So I recently saw this radio on the Banggood website and I thought it looked rather interesting, mainly because the display looks something like I've never seen before on a radio. So this is the Xi'an Pi FTUV78, although I've also seen this radio labeled as an iRadio UV5118, but for the purpose of this video, I'll call it a UV78. Now, if you saw my video on the Xi'an Pi UV8800, then I'm also happy to report that the build quality of the UV78 is just as good. Now, this radio feels extremely solid in the hand with a good amount of weight, but not too much. The antenna that comes with this radio does cover from 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 470 megahertz. On the left side of the radio, we find two programmable function buttons and of course the PTT button. On the right hand side, we find the speaker mic connection, which also can be used as the programming port using a programming cable. Now I use my Bofen cable, which worked perfectly well. I'll talk more about this later in the video. What's also nice to see is the USB-C charge port. Yep, we can charge the radio's battery just by plugging in the USB-C cable. Now this port is only for charging. There is no programming ability through the USB-C port. All of these ports are covered with a rubber cover. I guess this is why the radio is rated for IP54, being waterproof and dustproof. Now the battery is easily removable, which exposes the solid metal chassis of the radio. The battery itself is stated as a 7.4 volt battery, but there is no capacity information on the battery itself. The specs of the radio say it's a 10,000 or 5,800 milliamp hour, depending on which specs you read, but I wouldn't believe that information as the battery, in my opinion, seems a bit too thin. What do you think? So here's the UV78 with the power turned on. What do you think of this display? Personally, I think it looks pretty cool. Definitely something different. From a practical point of view, it's fairly simple and you can disable the screen while it's still on and operational. And the menu button allows the user to change its programming. The first option would be to either be in frequency mode or in channel memory mode. However, what I've discovered is that if you select a channel and then go into frequency mode and then make changes, then those changes will be stored on the last selected channel. I guess this makes it nice and easy to program each of the memories directly on the radio as well as through software. All the regular features like CTCSS or DCS encode and decode are available along with high and low power settings. If enabled, the radio also has voice prompt in English or in Chinese, which speaks out loud the current selected menu option as you select it. Quite useful for the visually impaired operators. The UV78 can utilize either 12.5 kHz or 25 kHz bandwidth which is ideal if you're in the locations like the UK where 2 meters is 12.5 kilohertz and 70 centimeters is 25 kilohertz. Frequency steps can also be adjusted. So if you wanted to use the radio on PMR, then the exact frequency can be acquired. As the display only shows six digits in total, the extra precise frequency is shown as a numeric symbol under the last three digits. The keyboard allows for direct frequency entry, but also doubles up as quick shortcut buttons to certain functions. The functions are written in blue text on each button. To activate the function, simply press and hold the button until the function is activated. I think this is quite a common feature that we see on a lot of handheld radios. The beep function on button nine is probably the first button I tried as it got rid of that annoying beep every time you press a button. You'll also notice FM on the zero button. This allows quick access to the broadcast band of between 60 and 108 megahertz. The UV78 also supports AM receive on the air band between 118 and 136 megahertz. This is receive only, you cannot transmit there. Now when it comes to RF power output, and according to my power meter, which has a dummy load connected on the rear, at 145 megahertz on low power, we see an output of around 1.1 watt. And on high power, we see an output of around 3.6 watts. If we then move up to 435 megahertz, which is in the middle of the 70 centimeter handband, we see around one watt on the low power setting. And then we see around 4.2 watts on high power. 
Now if we move up a little further, up to 446 megahertz, we see 1.5 watts on low power and then three watts on high power. Now I was looking through the manual. Yes, through the manual, I know that us hams don't even take the manual out of the box, but in this case, I came across a feature which sounded pretty cool. Although I'm not able to test this as I only have one of these radios, it appears you can wirelessly clone these radios. So from what the manual says, you can put a whole load of these radios in a specific receive mode. And then from a program radio, you can send the entire memory bank to the receiving radios. Now that's pretty cool, assuming that it works. Further down the manual, I came across two other settings, 4.7.23, which refers to a scrambler setting, and then 4.7.22, compounding. Now I've no clue what compounding means, so I'll put it to the test with its simple on or off state. Turns out it's a speech compressor of some kind. M0DQW, this is an audio test with the compressor turned off. This is a audio test with the compressor turned off. This is an audio test. This is M0DQW, an audio test with the compressor turned on. Compressor turned on with the compressor turned on. Audio test, one, two, three, four, five. So programming the radio was quite easy as the software itself is fairly basic. The cable that I used was just a $5 Baofeng cable from Amazon and it connected to the radio just like this. Obviously the other end plugs into a USB connection on your Windows computer. Now I couldn't find the software anywhere online, which was quite frustrating. But after speaking with Banggood, they contacted the supplier of the radio and within 24 hours, they sent me the software. I'll upload this software somewhere and leave a link in the description for you guys in case you need it. After plugging in the cable and checking device configuration for which COM port to use, I was then able to read from the radio. Now on the channel information tab, you can go ahead and enter your transmit and receive frequencies along with any subtones, power level settings and bandwidth. Two things to point out here is that I found the RX and TX frequency was the wrong way round. And secondly, there is no way of entering an alphanumeric name for the channel. I guess you just have to remember what each channel is for. But the basic config tab allows you to change how the radio operates. For example, you can reassign the function for the two side keys. You can enable or disable voice prompts, turn off the beep, control how the screen operates, set squelch level, etc. Basically everything you can do on the radio, you can set in software too. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief overview of the Giant Pi FTUV78 handheld radio. I think it's a pretty nice little radio and that screen is really, really interesting. Anyway, if you own one of these, let me know down below what you think of it already. And if you want to buy one, I'll leave a link down below as well. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.